Hi, my name is Annalisa, and I play in the Nashville Symphony Orchestra in the first violin section. And that was Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. That melody is also known as Ode to Joy. There are two violin sections in the symphony, and there are usually two violin parts in other music groups too, like quartets and quintets. Here's a picture of a quartet, and you can see the two violins and a viola and a cello. As a first violin player, I usually play the highest notes in pieces. The violins are smaller instruments with thinner, shorter strings that produce higher sounds, kind of like a bird. We sound different on our lowest string. violin often plays the melodic line or the main tune in the group. That melody that I just played was from Brahms Hungarian Dance Number no. 1. How about this melody? Let's see if you recognize this tune. That was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I think the violin sounds really sweet sometimes, sometimes rich and full, and it's always exciting. What do you think about the sound of the violin? Next, my colleague and friend Annalise will talk more about being a violinist and playing second violin. Hi friends, I'm Annalise Cowart, and I play second violin in the Nashville Symphony. I'm here to talk to you about my instrument, the violin. Now the violin is about 400 years old, but it has ancestors that are about a thousand years old. By the time orchestras look like the Nashville Symphony does, it looked like this. It's made out of a resonating box of wood called the body, a neck, a decorative scroll, and a bridge that holds up the strings E, A, D, and G. So it's the highest string instrument in the orchestra and there are a whole bunch of us. We use the bow to pull sound of the, out of the violin by creating friction with the hair, which pulls the string to produce a beautiful sound. The horse hair, which is what the hair is, it's horse tail hair, will pull the string and create tiny vibrations, which makes the singing sound. Oh, there are so many ways to play the violin. So legato, like I just did, beautiful and singing. Or spiccato, where you bounce the bow. Or using your finger to pluck the string called pizzicato. Or touching your string or your finger to the string lightly in just the right mathematical spot makes a kind of hollow, spooky singing sound called the harmonic. And here in Nashville, sometimes we call the violin a fiddle, so we can kind of make the violin dance a little bit. Um, and it's a lot of fun to play. So I think I like playing the second violin in the symphony because I often get to play the harmony with the first violins. Not always, but sometimes. And it's hard to describe harmony, but it's when I play a different line than the melody plays to make it sound more interesting or beautiful. I try to do that with this twinkle variation with Annalisa. Check it out. Steve Drake. I'm a cellist in the Nashville Symphony and I'd like to show you a little bit about the cello. It's a lot like the violin in that it's tuned in fifths, it has four strings, um, however it's a lower instrument so we play a lot more bass lines although we play some melodies too. Um, the big difference between this and a violin is that we have an end pin here to hold it off the ground, uh, to hold it in our playing position. And while it's kind of big and it looks heavy, it's not actually heavy, it's actually completely hollow. And it, it, it's not 
and much, nearly as heavy as you think it is. Most of the time we use a bow, but we can play pizzicato also. But we use the bow a lot more just because we can play more, faster and more interesting stuff. Hi, my name is Anthony Parse, and I'm a viola player in the Nashville Symphony. In my free time, I like to practice rock climbing. I really enjoy exploring in the kitchen. Mmm, yum. I like to work out. I like horsing around with my cat. And I love dancing with my girlfriend. And the instrument that I've chosen to play in the orchestra is the viola. Now, I love the viola because it's a master of different colors and sounds. It, of course, sounds higher than the cello, but lower than a violin. And I could make it sound like a violin if I wanted to. But then again, I could also make it sound like a flute. I could make it sound like a big jazz bass. I could even make it sound, I don't know, like an electric guitar. to make it sound like is a viola. And the viola plays a really unique role in music. The viola is really less of a hero, more of a sidekick. <laughs> On a football team, the viola wouldn't really be like a quarterback. It'd be more of like a defensive lineman. Hike! <laughs> that means that the music that we often end up playing sounds a lot like... Or maybe like... something like it's not exactly music that you would walk away singing or a melody that you would remember and get stuck in your head but it's important to the music it makes the music feel richer and fuller and more interesting and when you can take those inner voices those lines that are between the melodies and make those really interesting and engaging the whole piece comes alive that's what I love doing, that's why I love playing viola. So keep on the lookout for those inner voices and see if you can appreciate how fun it is to play viola. Hi, my name is Matt, and I'm a musician in the Nashville Symphony Orchestra. In the orchestra, I play this big thing right here, known as the double bass. You might have heard of this instrument referred to as the string bass, the upright bass, or sometimes just the bass, but they all mean the same thing, which is this instrument right here. So if you notice, the double bass looks kind of like a violin. It has the same shape as a violin. It's made of wood, and it's got four strings, just like a violin. That's because they are both in the string family. The string family is a family of instruments consisting of the violin, the viola, the cello, and the bass. The bass is the biggest in the string family, and it's also the lowest. So in orchestra, lots of times, 
we are playing, the basses are playing really low notes while other instruments like the violin are playing melodies up top. So we would play low notes kind of like this. Now you can play the bass with the bow like I just did where you take the hair from the bow and draw it across the strings. Or you can use your fingers and pluck like this. Now, just because the bass oftentimes plays low notes doesn't mean we can't play a melody. So here I'm going to play a quick melody for you by Beethoven, known as Ode to Joy. like hearing a little bit about the bass and we hope to see you at a concert sometime.